All right, boys and girls. We're dealing with a General Motors 5.3 pump specifically. I guess it's the same thing as a 4.8, 6.0, and various other GM engines of the Vortec version. Uh, like the small block Chevy is now aluminum headed cast iron block. But anyway, <clears throat> the old original pump here didn't so much fail somewhere something went wrong with it and I'm just not going to dink with it it might have been in the pressure regulator because there's some chuckling in that valve inside the housing here I'm not going to mess with it but one of the things that you got to do when you go to put this back together you may already see that I've got some shim stock added to this here and here oh here and here you can see it anyway let's get a focus on that there we are and uh, what they do is they're going to center centralize this unit so that when you put the pump in the engine, let's focus again, focus, focus. When you put the pump in the engine, the crankshaft part, which is this internal part, rides on the crankshaft. This is the crankshaft that directly drives this. This pump is mounted directly behind your harmonic balancer inside a housing. This is not adjustable. There's a little float on this, not much. But if you get this pump out of position, because this pump could be slightly one way or another, because these bolt holes are somewhat larger than the bolts that hold the pump in place. And you're going to be fighting with installing the pickup tube anyway. So you put one and a half thousand feeler gauges. You can see them in there. Here's another one over here. I just cut some off and volunteered them off of some old feeler gauge sets I got. This this one here is not good because it's got nicks on the edges. That screws up the uh, quality of the device. And what happens is, when we install this pump with these shims in here, one on each side, 180 degrees opposed from each other there, we'll wind up with a balanced dimension when the pump is installed, bolt it down, then we pull these shims out. Here, there's one coming out. And there, if I can get it, is the other one coming out. And this pump then will be directly in the center of the operating system, wherever the crank pulls on it. They don't want the crank pulling up or down on it too much because that could cause the pump to fail. You could force it to drag real hard on one side or the other. Now, the surface we're talking about is this surface here on the pump. This is out of the old pump over there. And um, we want to make sure that it sits in there happily. If I can get it back in there, it will. I might have it upside down. Yeah, I probably do. Anyway, there we are. It's in. You want it to be happy in there. So yet when it goes around and around, it doesn't have any pressure on it pulling that up or down in relationship to where these crank bolts put the water of the uh, oil pump. So it's just something you can do. Um, I went through the mailing booklet. It's a brand new pump. There's nothing in there about adjusting this clearance. But we used to do this on old high point gears, uh, on uh, gear sets and other cars that use this type of arrangement. Chrysler used them for a while. Um, you see this type of pump in automatic transmissions in the old days. Don't see it too much anymore, but anyway, there we are. And uh, sorry for shaking this thing. I'm uh, hmm. cold. It's cold out here. I got it up to like 50 degrees in here. It was uh, 22 degrees when I started, so it's up to 50, 52 right now. And uh, I'm getting cold. I'm going to the house. I'm done for the day. Anyway. That's part we're going to do on this uh, pump. Melling does not advocate this in any way. I'm going to do it because I think it's right. But I'm going to call Melling in a few minutes and see what they say. Send them an email anyway. Ask them about shimming the pump and making sure it's on center. So there you are. There's your pump. That's it. See you later, boys and girls. Bye-bye.